FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you our 2013 preview of the Military Bowl between the Marshall Thundering Herd and the Maryland Terrapins. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with Marshall. The Marshall Thundering Herd have one of the most explosive offenses in the country, led by quarterback Raheem Cato. Now this game versus Maryland, look for the Herd's passing game to be much more condensed to try to create natural rubs and picks versus that aggressive 3-4 defense. Condensing would allow this offense to create opportunities for their top playmaker like tight end Gator Hoskins in the passing game and quick hitters in a running game for tailback Isaray Taliaferro. Defensively, Marshall has done a solid job versus the run, but they'll have to be great versus Maryland, whose read option attack puts a lot of pressure on opposing defenses. And usually their defensive line can beat you with speed, but in order to have success versus the Terps, shedding blocks and playing with discipline at the linebacker position will have to be excellent in order to get Maryland off the field. Now let's move over to Maryland in this ball game, and it's been a tale of two seasons for the Terps this year, 5-1 in the first six weeks and 1-5 in the latter part of the season. The reason is due to the injuries to key starters like Stephon Diggs, the talented wide receiver, and quarterback Dexter McDougal. Offensively versus Marshall, their best defense has to be their own offense. So in order to keep the herd off the field, quarterback C.J. Brown must be able to stay ahead of the chains and sustain drives. So look for a heavy dose of inside zone and power plays as Maryland has a size advantage up front. Defensively, I'm a big fan of the Terps linebacking core led by Marcus Whitfield who excels on both ends of defense and it'll be that linebacking core, especially in the passing game, that will have to have the biggest impact both in applying pressure on Cato and also playing effective coverage in the intermediate zone area. They have to be able to defend the crossers and option routes, otherwise it could be a long day defensively. The X Factor for Marshall in this ballgame will be the linebacking core. They have to play a huge role in stopping the run. If they can back Maryland up offensively, it goes a long way in helping the herd win this ballgame. And the X Factor for Maryland will be their passing game. If C.J. Brown is able to keep that defense honest with hitting short to intermediate plays early in the passing game, it's going to make things easier for these guys to run the football, which is why I believe they have to start the game trying to get into that passing rhythm in order to have success overall. Now here are some coaching points for both teams in this ball game. For Maryland, the offensive line climbing the ladder will be key. Like I've mentioned before, they have the size advantage up front. If they're able to lean on their defensive line and get to the second level, it's going to be a long day for that Marshall Thunder Herd run defense. And they have to shrink the ball game. Like I mentioned before, they can run the heck out of the ball game, and their best defense will be their own offense to keep Marshall off the field. And they have to defend the short to intermediate pass area, like I mentioned before. That's why the linebacking core will have to play a huge game this week versus Marshall. And for Marshall in this ball game, the secondary cannot fall asleep back there in coverage, which could happen versus a team like Maryland that's very run heavy. You have to stay alert. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself getting burned for big plays deep down the field. And I think versus this 3-4 defense, they can have some success running inside with Talia Ferro. You can spread that defense out and still be able to run your inside zone and gap plays to have success. And on defensively, you have to maintain gap integrity versus that read option attack with C.J. Brown and company. If they're not able to stop the run, you won't stop Maryland. So you have to stay disciplined in your assignments on that side of the ball. Now here are some 2014 draft prospects you want to watch out for in this ball game. For Maryland, linebacker Marcus Whitfield is one of the best linebackers in the country. Your classic outside edge rusher in a 3-4 defense does a great job on both ends of defense. And I'm also a big fan of Deontay Arnett, the guard, 6'4", 295. Very important to the running game for Maryland. And on that defensive side of the ball as well, Darius Kilgo, 6'3", 310. No tackle, does a great job at the point of attack. For Marsh, you look at Gator Hoskins, one of the best H-backs in the country, 6'2", 245. is a matchup nightmare for any defender and I'm also a big fan of quarterback Raheem Cato the junior six feet one nine and don't let the size fool you this guy can definitely play quarterback at the next level and also I want you to keep an eye on Brandon Sparrow 6'3 305 does a great job getting penetration versus the run and also doing a great job versus the pass The Maryland Terrapins took on the East Carolina Pirates in the 2010 Military Bowl and what would be head coach Ralph Friedgen's last game as the Terps head man and they sent him out on top with a stout performance on both sides of the ball. However, running back Darrell Scott stole the show, rushing for 200 yards on 13 carries as the Terps crushed the Pirates 51-20.
In the last Motor City Bowl of the 20th century, the Marshall Thundering Herd came into this matchup versus BYU, ranked 11th in the country and boasting a 12-0 record. A tightly contested first half was broken open in the third quarter as running back Doug Chapman ripped off an 87-yard touchdown run en route to a 21-3 victory as the Herd finished the season a perfect 13-0 and ranked 10th in the final AP polls. The third-ranked Terrapins took on the number-one-ranked Tennessee Volunteers in the 1952 Sugar Bowl in what was a dominating performance by both the Terps' defense, holding a potent Tennessee offense to only 13 points, and by running back Ed Mozalewski to defeat the Vols 28-13 in what some say is the best team in Maryland history. Now, the Terps didn't win the AP National Championship that year as votes were in before the bowl game, but they have since been retroactively named national champions. Head coach Bob Pruitt is definitely a campus legend. He compiled a 94 and 23 record as coach, winning the 1996 Division I-AA National Championship with a perfect 15-0 record. And as Marshall made the transition to Division I-A, the following year he went on to win four straight MAC titles and five in total, while going an impressive five and two in bowl games and finished the 1999 season a perfect 13-0. Quarterback Jack Scarbath is definitely a campus legend. He was a two-sport athlete at Maryland, also playing lacrosse. He was an outstanding quarterback that led the Terps to an undefeated national championship year in 1951. And in 1952, Scarbath was a consensus first-team All-American, the Southern Conference Player of the Year, and runner-up for the Heisman Trophy. I like Marshall in this ball game. I look at the way they play offense. They can spread the field and force you to make plays in space consistently. I think that's a battle they can win. They also can win inside the red zone where the Turks struggle to score touchdowns and you have to score seven if you want to beat Marshall. So I like the Thundering Herd to come away the 2013 Military Bowl Champions.